Hi, Dr. Eric Balkavage, and we're back for another edition of Thyroid Thursday. Last week I talked about reverse T3, and I explained that reverse T3 is just an inactive form of T3. We said that T4 is the primary hormone that the thyroid gland makes. Most people who are getting medications are getting T4 medication, and T4 is inactive, needs to be converted into an active T3 if we're gonna stimulate or increase metabolism. But T4 can be converted into T3 or into inactive reverse T3. Both of these guys can be transported into the peripheral tissues and depending on which is in greater concentration, that's the one that's probably gonna to bind to the thyroid receptor. If T3 binds to the thyroid receptor, your metabolism goes up, your hypothyroid symptoms go down. If reverse T3 binds to that thyroid receptor, your metabolism goes down and your hypothyroid symptoms go up. So it's really important to measure your reverse T3 so you know what's happening to the T4. So a follow-up question to last week was, well, what determines whether the body makes T3 or reverse T3? And there's a complicated answer and there's a simple answer. We're gonna go with the simple answer today that stress in the body really determines what happens at the cellular level. In previous videos, I talked about these things called deiodinases. And it's the deiodinases that convert T4 to T3. And there's three forms of these guys. There's D1, D2, and D3. And primarily, this is the concentration of these deionase enzymes is different in different tissues in the body. But to keep it simple, D1 and D2 will convert T4 to active T3 in most tissues. D1 and D3 will convert T4 to reverse T3 in most tissues. Okay, we'll keep it simple like that. So what determines which of these guys is activated? Well, under certain situations, we'll just say stress situations like inflammation and calorie restriction. Um, anything that really drives a stress response in the body is probably going to drive more D1 and especially more D3 stimulation. And if we drive more D3 stimulation, then T4 is primarily going to go to reverse T3. Now it's not, this isn't a perfect scenario. All the cells don't behave the same. All the cells don't have the same concentrations of deionase enzymes. But from a very simplistic standpoint, if I'm under greater amounts of stress, more likely I'm gonna get more T4 converted to reverse T3 by this D3 enzyme. And in a healthy situation, and I'm in situations where I want to increase metabolism, I'm probably going to get more D2, D1 and D2 activation, and I'm going to get more T3 hormone produced. So what really determines whether I get more active versus inactive hormone comes down to stress and its impact at the cellular, the cellular level on whether I get more D2 and more conversion to T3, or are my cells producing more D3 or activating more D3 to convert T4 to reverse T3? Whichever one of these I'm getting more of, more likely I'm gonna get that type of thyroid hormone. And so this is where T, knowing your reverse T3 and T3, and I think the whole thyroid panel should be run every time, this is where this becomes really important because it doesn't matter how much T4 the thyroid glands make or how much the thyroid gland makes, it's a matter of how much T4 is converted into T3 and how much of that T3 gets into the cell and how much of that T3 binds to this receptor. Because if I make decreased amounts of T3 and increased amounts of reverse T3, this will still look the same, but I may get more of this, and if I get more reverse T3 and that gets into the cell and it's binding to this thyroid receptor, then your thyroid metabolism is going down. So what determines whether it's T3 or reverse T3, you can just, is a very simple answer, think of stress and stress's impact 
on these things called the deiodinase enzymes. Increased stress, I get increased D3 activity, I get more reverse T3. If I have lower amounts of stress, I get increased D2 activity, more T4 to T3, more active hormone getting into the cell, and that's going to drive my metabolism. So if you are feeling hypothyroid and your doctor tells you your T4 levels are normal and they haven't run a T3 and a reverse T3, you need to make sure you ask them to do that. If you're taking thyroid medications, which are primarily T4, again, it becomes critically important to know what's happening to that T4. Is it being primarily converted to T3 or is it primarily being converted to reverse T3, okay? If your doctor's giving you lots of thyroid hormone medication, T4, and you still feel hypothyroid, you still have all those hypothyroid symptoms, remember, that just means that you're not getting enough active thyroid hormone, T3, into the peripheral cells to bind to the receptors to stimulate metabolism. So you must ask your doctor to run this T3. Most doctors do not run it. They don't understand the importance of this. I'll give you a quick example. I had a patient come in the other day. She's hypothyroid. She's on thyroid medication. Her TSH and T4 values are normal, and yet she still has all the challenges of a hypothyroid patient. She's struggling to lose weight. She's actually gaining weight. She's tired. She's fatigued. Her hair's thinning out. And while the normal lab range is somewhere between 10 and 24, and then varies from different labs, her reverse T3 was up into the 30s. So if her reverse T3 was up into the 30s and her doctor is giving her T4, what's happening is she's going down this pathway. Stress response is causing her to go down this pathway to make more reverse T3. That high levels of reverse T3 are competing for those thyroid receptors in here, and so her metabolism stinks, okay? Once we started decreasing the stressors in her body, and her stress reduced, now instead of making more T3, D3, we're making more D2, more thyroid hormone, we start to see an increased T3 stim stimulation of those thyroid receptors within the, in the, within the peripheral cells, and her metabolism actually started to go up. And she started losing weight, feeling better, almost all of her symptoms have improved in the last month or two, and we'll see what we're seeing as a decrease in that reverse T3 levels as we address the stress, okay? So hopefully this was helpful. Look for another edition of Thyroid Thursday next week. Take care.